I'm Kenneth King. I'm currently an Associate Justice of the Middlesex County Juvenile Court. Prior to becoming a judge, I was a practicing lawyer for about 30 years. And as a practicing lawyer, I started off with the State Child Welfare Agency. Then I went into private practice. And in both of those jobs, I represented a lot of children and families who were involved in abusive or neglectful situations. I spent three years running a public defender office that represented solely parents or children in child abuse and neglect cases. I uh, then taught for 10 years before I was appointed to the bench. And I speak only in my personal capacity. I, I am not speaking on behalf of the trial court or the juvenile court of Massachusetts. Abuse is typically defined in the, the context of fear of harm or the fact of harm. At its core, domestic violence is about control and is about controlling the other party in the relationship. Through my experience of having represented a number of women or, or children in these circumstances, as well as some men who were the accused in these circumstances, I've become familiar with the difficulties that people have in relating the incident, in testifying in a way that is cogent and persuasive, and in some of the physical manifestations of abuse and of trauma. Trauma interferes with perception. Trauma interferes with the ability to recall. Trauma interferes with the ability to relate what has transpired. This can create real problems in the fact-finding process because a witness who may not appear to have a good understanding or a good memory may be reacting to the trauma rather than fabricating or confabulating a story. These cases are never easy. Abusers often are very engaging, personable, seductive, if you will, which is why they're able to, to ensnare partners who keep coming back. When they're good, they're really good. Uh, and they will make, oftentimes, a better presentation than the victim of the abuse. So it's a difficult balance that we try to strike to protect the victim of the violence. At the same time, we have to be mindful that if we issue restraining orders or if we take custody of children in response to a domestic violence incident, our orders have a significant impact on people's constitutional and civil rights. People often find coming to court to talk about these things to be very, very difficult. This can get really thorny if the alleged abuser is acting as his or her own attorney, which would then give him or her the right to question the victim or the alleged victim directly. Testimony changes all the time. The, the reality is it is very difficult to, to talk about an incident on multiple occasions and not have some variations in the language used or how the incident is described. People often look at scans when you talk about preparing a witness. Uh, but really, it's the attorney that doesn't prepare the witness is not doing their job and is being ineffective. And when you have victims of trauma who will have difficulty relating, it's important to help them understand the trial process and understand to present themselves and how to present their story in a way that enhances their credibility rather than detracts from it. That's very important with people who may have difficulties with memory and with, with perception. When there is a gross imbalance in the representation, what is already a hard case becomes much, much more difficult. And this is particularly so if you've got the alleged abuser who oftentimes has economic power in the relationship, who is able to retain a private attorney and the person who has been victimized who is unrepresented. Domestic violence be, being in some measure about control uh, is a phenomenon that is by no means limited to poor communities. The difference is that people of means oftentimes have other ways to resolve these problems than resort to the court. So the Fortune 500 executive who is abusive has a real interest in that abuse not becoming a matter of the public record and that can give the abuse party leverage that in a, a different situation without means they may not have. Domestic violence is, a, is an equal opportunity victimizer. Oftentimes seen as a crime or an offense that affects the adults, 
And little thought is given to the fact that children too are victimized when parents are in abusive relationships. Children who witness violence, particularly violence in the home, are victimized to the same extent as people who are the direct victim of that violence. Children who grow up in a home where there is domestic violence, where they witness a parent being uh, physically mistreated or hear a lot of loud, angry, arguing or hurtful comments, have the same type of PTSD reactions, the same type of trauma reactions as do veterans coming back from the Gulf War. A strikingly high percentage of the kids who come into the court on delinquency cases or the school offending cases, the truancy cases, have trauma histories and are reacting or acting based on what is very adaptive uh, in a violent or traumatic setting, uh, but not so adaptive in the community at large. So exposure to violence in the home or in the community at a young age has a profound impact on the trajectory of a child's development. In a custody case, our law says that if we're going to give custody to a person who we have determined is the abusive party, we have to explain why that is happening and why it's in the interest of the child to be with the abuser rather than the other party. I think we all recognize that placing custody with an abuser has a lot of risk and sends a very mixed message at best to the child. Now, if the abused party is so physically or emotionally impaired that they cannot take care of the child, it becomes a very tough issue because foster care or substitute care, out-of-home care, itself has a lot of risk. Now, obviously, we've got to ensure to the extent that we can, that the child's not going to be further victimized by further episodes of violence. Um, so we try to impose limitations that would, would protect the child. And we try to make sure that everybody in that situation is getting treatment. We work hard to avoid that outcome and look for alternatives to it. We know the stakes are high. We know people are being hurt. We want to get it right. We're trying to get it right and are really looking for any information we have that will help us make the determination of who's telling the truth, which side carries more weight, which is why uh, medical records or prior reports can be very important. Safety in the streets begins with safety at home. And we have to work hard to give young people the skills that they need to have intense interpersonal emotional relationships that do not become controlling and violent. This is a, a, a task that falls to all of us. And it certainly is important for judges and for court workers to recognize the need to promote safe homes in order to have safe communities.